All right, Garrett, thanks. Well, of course, the last couple of weeks here on 5 News, we've welcomed local doctors and medical professionals to discuss the COVID-19 outbreak and answer your texting or text in questions. Today, we're being joined by Dr. Stephen Carney, a primary care physician with Baptist Health in Van Buren. Dr. Carney, thank you so much for being with us today. One question that we get all the time, and I'm sure you're hearing it as well. Um, as a primary care doctor, what, what are the steps that you're telling your patients if they suspect that they have COVID-19? Well, uh, the first thing they need to do is, of course, get in contact with us, you know, and let us uh, know what kind of symptoms that they are having. If they are experiencing anything that has been, you know, everybody has probably already heard this already, if they have high fever, or if they have a lot of uh, general malaise, this is what differentiates the coronavirus from a from a garden variety flu: is the, the 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 temperature and also the fatigue and malaise that goes along with this. You have some general body aches as well. It's the reason why a lot of people who are still working at this time, and myself included, we always get our temperatures checked right before we come in and go to go to work. And that's the so, that's the most important thing is to is to recognize what the symptoms are. Yes. Um, if uh, they do have the symptoms at that time uh, that we feel that they do, that we uh, urge them to contact. Uh, we have a coronavirus hotline number with Baptist Health. As a matter of fact, I could give that uh, sure. here if you, if you wish. It's 479-709-6845. Uh, 709-6845. Okay. That is the coronavirus hotline at Baptist, and they can uh, give you information about whether or not you might need to be tested uh, at that particular time if your symptoms meet the criteria. I've had several of my patients who have called them, and they said they did not meet the criteria, and therefore they did not get tested. Okay. Hydroxychloroquine has been a new word added to our vocabulary these days to, to treat the coronavirus. At least that's the theory behind this. What are your thoughts about this? this. Well, it's not a new drug to me. This is something, it's an old drug that has been used for many, many years. It was one of the first drugs that was used uh, to treat malaria. It is also used to treat uh, rheumatoid arthritis and very other, various other types of inflammatory conditions. Now, the, the thing that, uh, that bothers me right now is that some people seem to have in their mind that this is some sort of preventative, uh, um, that uh, you can take this to actually keep from getting the coronavirus. Uh, uh, and that is not at all true, okay? If you take this drug, it always, always has to be under the supervision of a doctor. It has to be a prescription. I've heard uh, one particular case where apparently somebody um, saw chloroquine on as one of the ingredients from a particular material and took that as trying to do a preventative is actually a fish tank cleaner. Hmm. So uh, we don't uh, certainly don't want anybody doing that sort of thing. It's very dangerous. So uh, you always have to consult with your physician. The hydroxychloroquine is something that is used when you really get symptomatic with it. Now, a lot of people are going to have the um, they're going to have the coronavirus and they're not even going to be aware that they have it. OK, uh, that's something that I can address a little bit later. And sure. stuff. Okay. But a lot of people are, are not symptomatic and they still are carriers of the disease. OK, so. we do have one other question that that's, uh, was texted to us. Some people will still need to see their doctor for acute illness or follow up care. What are some of the ways patients can keep in contact or keep in touch with physicians without actually going into the clinic? Well, uh, that is a very good question, and it's one that we have been working on very diligently here uh, within our uh, within our clinic and with the Baptist Health System as well. We are doing telehealth, which is uh, basically what I'm doing with you right now. You yes. can talk on your iPhone, uh, you know, or through Skype or whatever. But uh, we have a system set up through our uh, through our electronic records that we can actually do a video conference call with you through, and I can see you and we can uh we can talk that way it's um it's better than a, a an audio phone call but it's not quite as good as being face to face but it's still you can we can do a lot of things through telehealth that way and something that i hope that uh, we will be able to continue after after this uh, acute crisis is over exactly all right dr stephen carney primary care physician with baptist health in van buren we've got more questions for him coming up in just a second 
All right, welcome back. Dr. Stephen Carney, primary care physician with Baptist Health and Van Buren, joining us to take your text in questions. Got this one text, and this is really starting to be a popular question. Should people be wearing masks every time they leave the house, or should it be just something they wear inside the house? I think for the time being, it, it is a very good idea to go ahead and wear masks for the simple reason what I pointed out before. Uh, you may feel fine and, uh, you know, you may not be having any sort of um, symptoms at all, but you can still be infectious. You can still have the virus and you can spread it to other people. The masks, quite frankly, are not going to prevent you unless you have an N95 mask. Okay? Right. You know, you've heard about those. Unless you have an N95 type mask, a regular type mask is not going to keep you from getting infected, but it will keep you from spreading the infection to other people. Now, uh, if you can wear an N95 mask, that probably would be best. But if you're going to be out in public, I did this when I went out to Sam's, as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. just last weekend. I wore a mask and I wore gloves. And uh, I would encourage people to do the same thing. We've okay. seen that we've seen those cotton masks and those homemade masks are those won't keep you from getting it, but they will keep keep you from spreading it. That's correct. Yes. Okay. So that's, you can still get uh, that's those. the idea. There. Okay. All right. Um, another question we've seen uh, come in. We've seen the virus spread quickly in factory settings across the country. What advice do you give people who might be still working on the lines in these factories? Well, that would be up to the. Um, up to the people that are in charge of, uh, I guess, the um, not IT people, but the uh, HR people, right. you know, the human human resources will, will need to be sure that people uh, have the protective equipment that they need. They need to wear masks, certainly. Every single person that is in that uh, in that sort of setting needs to be wearing a mask, and it would be probably be preferable even to, to wear some sort of uh, protective coverall or, or something of that sort. Certainly when you get home, and I do this every single night, when I, when I get home, I take my clothes and we put them right into the hot wash. I've you know, heard that, that from, from physicians and nurses. I've heard that's the first, I've seen it on Facebook, a couple of posts, that as soon as they walk in the door, it is in the laundry. Yes, I don't even sit down. <laughs> stop in the uh, stop in the laundry room. Exactly. Just take everything off there. We heard the uh, the governor uh, talk about this earlier this afternoon. We are nearing Easter weekend when traditionally people like to gather and celebrate and travel to do so. Um, what advice are you giving to folks this year um, when it comes to maybe wanting to go to a relative's house? I would advise against uh, going to see anybody else. Quite frankly, this is. Uh, this is, these are unprecedented circumstances, okay? I realize that, and I would dearly love to be able with, to worship with my church family on Sunday, uh, but under these circumstances, it just, I really don't think it's possible, unless, I think, doc, or Dr., the, the governor actually said something about, um, there, there are some churches that actually do as sort of a drive-up service. Everybody sure. stays in their car, and they do an audio service that way. That pro probably would be acceptable You're using the social distancing. But otherwise, you'll need to do just like we have been doing for these last uh, last few weeks, having having online services. A lot of churches are doing that. And I guess that goes to pretty, the same advice could be given to anybody who just wants to do traveling or travel outside of the state or come into the state uh, from other states. Yes, that's true because uh, you know, the the travel restrictions are there basically to prevent the spread of the disease. You can go and you can uh, be with somebody who feels fine, you feel fine, but you can still be spreading the disease. Okay. That's the the insidious part about this is that uh, it is so contagious and uh, and you may not even have symptoms until it's too late. I know you talked about how you suit yourself up uh, to, to do your job every day. How, how are you? How are you being affected by this pandemic? Well, I personally am wearing a mask and uh, usually gloves when I go in to see patients right now. I'm certainly doing everything that has been recommended, washing my hands a, a lot more uh, diligently than uh, probably I did before, which is something we're supposed to do in the medical profession anyway. Exactly, but, uh, we've, yes. we've been much more We've been much more conscious about that recently, to be perfectly honest about it. Okay. So, um, 
and quite frankly, I don't enjoy wearing the mask because uh, they, they're hard to breathe in. I will, I will admit that. Okay, it's one of the reasons I didn't want to become a surgeon because I didn't like wearing masks. <laughs> <laughs> and so, Dr. Stephen Carney joining us uh, from Baptist Health in Van Buren. We'll take a break. Get one final thought when we come back.